We begin tonight with Hurricane Ian barreling toward Florida. The storm in what they now call a rapid intensification period expected to go from a Category 2 to a Category 4 in the next 24 hours, racing across very warm waters, 90 degrees or more, with little to sheer to knock down any strength. Every county in Florida under a state of emergency, the first mandatory evacuations now underway tonight. Parts of Tampa Bay and Clearwater included. More than 300,000 people told it's too dangerous to stay that they should get out now. Hurricane Ian just upgraded to a Category 2, winds 100 miles an hour. Tropical storm warnings in effect for the lower keys, a hurricane warning already for Tampa Bay tonight. This evening, look at the size of this storm, this massive swirl seen from the International Space Station. The hurricane pummeling the Cayman Islands and on track to strike the western tip of Cuba. From there, the models show the hurricane headed straight for Florida. They are beginning to come into greater alignment looking like a possible landfall north of Tampa. Now, how close to Tampa just isn't known yet. And no matter what, it means storm surge and flash flooding are very real concerns here. Across the state tonight, they are getting ready for Ian to arrive, boarding up homes and businesses, stocking up on food and supplies. Shelves, as you can see, they're emptying out. And of course, families lining up to fuel their cars. But in the areas most at risk, families are packing up and heading to safer ground. Workers at Tampa General Hospital are building a flood wall now. And at the Tampa airport tonight, they are preparing for a potential shutdown of operations sometime in the next 24 hours. Our team of meteorologists, Ginger Z and Rob Marciano, both in Florida tonight. Rob, on the preparations, the warnings, and the real concern in Tampa Bay with those shallow waters. But first, Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z, she's on Treasure Island, Florida tonight, taking us through the timing and the track of this. Ginger, good evening. David, good evening to you. You can see erosion is a problem at beaches just west of Tampa for regular sunny day floods or thunderstorms. You can imagine, though, what they must be feeling when a 5 to 10 foot surge is possible right here when Ian comes ashore. Let's look at the storm, which you mentioned was a cat two. It'll cross western Cuba tonight. It'll head north northwest and then turn north northeast with its eyes set on Florida. Here's how the timing's going to go, and this is where a big problem comes in. It will slow down considerably when you pile water in this big bubble that is storm surge towards somewhere like Tampa Bay. You are going to have major issues from Sarasota up to Clearwater. But you see those warnings for Fort Myers and Naples. You are not out of the woods and this storm can still edge south or north. Every little mile is going to count on how much water piles up and what the wind speeds will be. One other thing I can promise you is the whole peninsula needs to watch in that northeast quadrant because that stationary front, it's going to act like a catcher's mitt and it's going to slow this thing down. It's going to catch that little ball and let it roll and roll and roll until it finally gets absorbed into it. 10 to 15 inches of rain on top of any of the surge you get, inland flooding is a problem, and tornadoes that could even reach Daytona or Orlando, that east coast of Florida that still will have a surge two to, three, two to four feet. You can see right there. So five to 10 feet in Tampa Bay is just a horrific situation and David will be watching this in the next 24 hours because the big impacts really happen Wednesday night through Thursday. Yeah, we can't overstate this up to a 10 foot storm surge right there in that area where Ginger is tonight, Treasure Island and Tampa Bay. Ginger, thank you. As you heard Ginger report there, the Tampa Bay area preparing for what could be the worst hurricane they've seen in 100 years. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano on the preparations underway, the evacuations, the warnings and what they're being forced to do at Tampa General. Tonight, Florida families are boarding up their homes, filling sandbags, fueling up, emptying store shelves, and evacuating to safety. First thing that's going to go is going to be powering in the water, so just make sure you have a little bit extra so you can take care of yourself and get out of town. Officials in Pinellas County and Tampa's Hillsborough County announcing mandatory evacuations for some areas and encouraging even more to get out now before it's too late. We expect to have to evacuate over 300,000 people, and it will take some time, which is why we are starting today. The Tampa Bay area now bracing for what could be their first direct hit in 100 years. What is the one thing you're, you're most worried about that may go awry? What I'm most worried about are the facts that, the fact that these storms are so unpredictable. Governor Ron DeSantis declaring that state of emergency, activating the National Guard. This is the level of the bay on a normal day here in Tampa, just a couple of feet below the seawall. But during the hurricane, we expect this water to be pushed up with a surge of 5 to 10 plus feet, hitting downtown where it has nowhere else to go, flooding the core of the city where evacuations are in place. 
And this level one trauma facility is in a vulnerable spot. They're putting up their flood protection all around Tampa General. This is their aqua fence. It only comes out during a hurricane. It's mobile, it's modular, and it's necessary. This trauma center sits in the evacuation zone. It will likely flood. And this wall is designed to keep the water out so they can keep the patients in. NASA planning to roll back Artemis One's $4 billion rocket from the launch pad. That launch now delayed until at least late October. Ian already hitting the Cayman Islands. Its sights now on Cuba. And Rob Marciano, who was tracking Fiona for us all last week, now on this hurricane with us from Tampa Bay. Rob, you've been warning how shallow the water is and why that's so dangerous there. And also tonight, what are officials now saying about evacuations where you are? Yeah, I mean, this bay is not just shallow, David. It is massive. It goes over 30 miles to the Gulf of Mexico. So that is a lot of water to be piled up here. And we're in a new moon cycle, so that raises the water even more onto the doorstep of this city. Hence the evacuations, and they are serious. Police were going door to door through hotels, making sure that guests were gone today. And that's just one zone. We expect two more zones to be announced in Pinellas County tomorrow. They want people in the lowest lying areas to get out sooner rather than later. David. Of course, we want people to heed these warnings. Rob, Ginger, our thanks to you both. Of course, we will stay on this as the hurricane approaches much more on GMA first thing in the morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.